everybody, this is Ralph Kiner. The date is September 24th. The year is 1969. The place, Shea Stadium. Now Gary Gentry with the pitch. And a ground ball hit down the short by Joe Torrey. It could be all. The ball fiddled by Bud Harrelson. On to Al Weiss. The throw on to Don Glendennon is in time, and the Mets have won it all. As you just heard, that was the climax of a season packed with fun, thrills, and excitement. We'd like to share that excitement by bringing you many of the highlights of this momentous season, as well as the actual voices of your favorite Mets, telling exactly when they felt the team was going all the way. Here's Gil Hodges, the manager of the year, a great ball player for the old Dodgers, now in his second year as manager of the New York Mets. This is what he had to say about the turning point of the 1969 season. Well, in my opinion, I believe it was the 11-game winning streak that uh, the boys uh, went on uh, starting out against San Diego. We came back from Houston uh, after a disastrous trip, actually, and uh, lost three ball games in, uh, in Houston. Came back to Shea Stadium, and San Diego beat us the first game they played us. And then uh, the boys went out and won 11 games in a row. And I believe that this was the time that uh, all of our boys decided that uh, they could win, and they gained the confidence of uh, going out to win every day. By the time the Mets clinched the pennant, Tom Seaver had 24 wins, more than anyone in the majors. He was a believer from the start. Here's Tom. Ralph, as far as myself, I was uh, I was convinced that we had the possibility of winning this thing in spring training. I really was. I felt that with the young ball players, the young pitching we had, that there certainly was a chance. And as far as the entire club, uh, realizing the, the possibility and gaining the confidence. I think it was the back-to-back -back series against the Dodgers and the Giants in New York. Oh, toward the early part of the season, their first trip in there. Now, we won three from the Giants and three from the Dodgers, six in a row. When we swept those two series, I think everybody fully realized that, uh, that the club had the possibilities and the potentials to really go a long way. And uh, in that game, of course, uh, I think it let the Cubs know, uh, as well as ourselves, that we are truly in this thing. It was August 19th. The score was nothing, nothing in the 14th. The Mets against the Giants and Juan Marichal. On one swing, Agee's home run gave the Mets the win one to nothing. Here's Tommy. Well, Rob, I thought it was when we won the two games from Chicago when they came into play us the, the second series in New York. We beat them in that series. We thought that we could beat them in that series, but uh, we didn't know when we went out and beat them. We played real good ball. They didn't give the game away to us. We, we beat them. We really beat them. We knew we beat them. And after that, we knew that we could catch them. And we knew we had the ball for them. Time and time again, as the season went along, Tug McGraw proved he was the one who could come in and do the job. I asked Tug when he personally felt he became a big league pitcher. Here's what he had to say. First of all, just making the club this year was, was a... Uh, a big accomplishment for me because I know when I came to spring training they really had not any plans for me. But then when I made the club and we came north early in the year uh, in that relief performance against Chicago I came in when Jim McAndrew first hurt his finger. He had the bases loaded I believe and there were no outs and the score was tied. And I came in and with a three and two count on the hitter and I threw my first pitch into a double play, no runs scored, and I struck out the next batter and went on to get the win in that game. I think I pitched four or five innings. And that was a big, uh, a big game for me as a relief pitcher. It gave me confidence in myself and made me believe in myself as being able to help the team in the bullpen. Catchers are proud of their trade as it takes a special kind of guy to don the tools of their trade. The Mets have that type of player in Jerry Grody, who tells his version of how the Mets got there. Ralph, I ha honestly have to believe it was August 15th. Uh, not only does that day really stick out in my mind for any number of reasons, but the big one was the fact that my daughter was born that day. Uh, it was that series, I believe, that uh, made a lot of difference because we won those four ball games against San Diego. And uh, during that time, the catchers drove in three of the game-winning runs at that particular point. And from there on, I think that was a big turning point because uh, we went ahead and uh, won all but one ball game from San Francisco and L.A. What about August 3rd when your home run off Claude Raymond in the 11th inning gave the Mets a 6-5 win? Well, that was, uh, to me, it was a very big ball game. Uh, anytime you hit a home run, I mean, especially when you hit as few home runs as I do to win a ball game, it uh, gives you a very big up. But we went on to Houston after that where we had a very bad series. 
and we're in several other towns we're in Cincinnati where we lost three out of four so that wasn't exactly a real big date as far as the ball club was concerned I think even though that we did win a couple of ball games there. Ed Greenpool the last of the 1962 amazing Mets early in the season hit two home runs as the Mets won over the Expos two to nothing. June 30 hit two to give the Mets a five to two win over the Dodgers. Here's what Ed had to say about the turn of the season. Well, I think it was in June, Ralph, the second time we reached 500, and I think it was just at that time uh, that we went on and had a living game winning streak. And I think it was that streak and the way we played during the streak when we came back so many ball games and started winning them late in the game and, and not giving up. But I think the fellas got confidence and went on in. I think he just started progressing for us. That was June 3rd. You hit two home runs to give the Mets a 5-2 win and got them back to 500. And I think the first time when you hit 500 and lost five in a row, it should have been a little shaky. Well, it was, Ralph, but I think uh, when we reached 500 the second time, we, we continued our streak and we went on to about five or six games above 500. And like I say, we've been improving. It's a young ball club, and uh, I think this was the confidence that we needed. A long winning streak early in the year, we got it. And from then on in, everybody got confidence and played real fine ball from June on. Early in August, Ken Boswell had a two-run double off Fergie Jenkins to lead the Mets to a 7-1 victory over the Cubs. Later on, on September 10th, he drove in the winning run in the 12th inning to give the Mets a 3-2 win over the Expos and put the Mets in first place for the first time in eight seasons of play in the National League. A lead the Mets never lost the rest of the way. Here's Ken Boswell's version of the Mets' success. Well, Ralph, I have to go back to midway, midway through the season. I think when uh, Chicago came to town, there was a big talk about, uh, about it being our nine crucial days. I think they were writing a book or something about it. And uh, we stood up through all this pressure. There was a lot of people in the clubhouse, and a lot of people talking, uh, talking pennant to, to us that time. And we beat uh, Chicago four out of six, and I think we swept Montreal in there uh, in between. Uh, there was a lot, a lot of pressure put on us. I think uh, the press were writing a lot of stuff about them. There was a lot of talk about Sano and Chicago and everything about the remarks they were making about the Mets.